Thank you so much, uh, David. Thank you for inviting me. Hi, everyone. So, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about social metabolism. Uh, actually, I I work mm. on. Yeah, maybe we close the window. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to present this framework. Uh, some some researchers, and I hope uh, it will be interesting, <laughs> uh, even though we are all tired, I guess. Um, what, what I want to... to ah. I, I hear a voice. Ah, it's me, but... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's me. Ah. Okay, it's, it's okay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was feeling a, a bit weird. <laughs> like a ghost here. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, I, I am interested in cap capital dynamics and enver environmental issues. And uh, what I do for a few years now is to study uh, capital dynamics by uh, studying uh, biophysical flows. That, so that's, that's why I, I will introduce the social metabolism uh, framework today. Um, I will highlight some uh, interdisciplinary works. Uh, so I, I, what I want to show is to how, how to combine this social metabolism framework with uh, political economy, uh, environmental history, political ecology, and so forth. Uh, and I will show some, uh, I, I will especially focus on uh, some very interesting studies uh, in the eco-Marxist literature about uh, uh, long-run analysis of uh, capital dynamics with this uh, uh, physical point of view. Whoa, so <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> uh, so first I, I want to say a few words about ecological economics because uh, the social metabolism framework or the social metabolism concept uh, comes from uh, ecological economics. So ecological economics uh, came in the <coughs> Uh, 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 this this, this uh, uh, academic field came uh, uh, emerged in the 60s, 70s, and against the neoclassical uh, floating framework, they they basically they criticized the fact that uh, in the neoclass neoclassical mainstream framework, you don't have any uh, material, you don't have any uh, uh, energy, and so forth, and they. They they had this physical point of view. So so th those people came from uh, biology, physics, uh, uh, ecological science, and they 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 were uh, 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 they criticized the fact that uh, uh, mainstream economics was basically ignoring uh, the main laws of uh, physics or uh, uh, and uh, from uh, uh, ecological science. So maybe, I don't know if you heard about those names. Uh, uh, maybe you, you heard about the uh, Meadows uh, uh, in, uh, uh, work in 72. Uh, Georges Kurogen, which is a physicist. Uh, he works on thermodynamics, actually. Uh, and Dali and many other people. So this, this uh, uh, ecological economics, what is important that, so is that the, this, this framework uh, came from, uh, yeah, uh, with this physical point of view about uh, uh, the economic system. So they present the economic system. Uh, so this is the, the pre analytical prevision uh, uh, of the, the eco economic system. So they present it uh, as a subsystem of an ecosystem. So in 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 to to in opposition to uh, mainstream economics, which present uh, the, the economic system as a like a, a rational actors buying and uh, selling stuff and uh, uh, investing and so forth. So with this uh, monetary flows perspective, they adopted a, a physical perspective, uh, thinking about the economic system as a, a, a an organism. Uh, which was uh, all the time absorbing uh, material energy flows and so forth, and and um, so this is the the, the main uh, the main uh, move of the ecological economics uh, against uh, uh, the mainstream framework, and um, 
the social metabolism. Does this work? No. Ah, yeah. Uh, social metabolism therein is a, a concept. So it, it comes from uh, biology, of course. Uh, the metabolism is the process by which an organism builds up and maintains its structures uh, through exchanging energy and materials with, it, with its environment throughout its life. So they, they took this uh, uh, metabolism uh, definition and apply it to the economic system. Okay? So that, that's the main, the main idea. And talking about social metabolism, uh, you add a little bit the, 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 the society there, uh, because otherwise it's only uh, material and energy flows. And the social metabolism, th this is a definition from uh, uh, people from Vienna, uh, which are the leading team in, in the world maybe. Uh, so they define social metabolism as the key link between society and the natural environment. To reproduce its biophysical structure, societies require a continuous flow of energy and materials that need to be extracted from and eventually released to the environment. So that's, that's the main idea, uh, that's the main definition of social metabolism. Now, in practice, they, in the 70s, they, they did, uh, they began to, to, to study uh, different territories. So this is the city of Brussels. And they uh, collected all the data about biophysical flows uh, here for, uh, of Brussels. So, that's really interesting uh, uh, if you compare this vision to uh, uh, mainstream, uh, 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 the mainstream vision of uh, one economy because they, they see Brussels as an organism that, that uh, uh, imports uh, electricity, coal, oil, uh, gas, uh, uh, aliments, uh, uh, food. Uh, so there are uh, waste, uh, there are uh, 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 water, emissions, of course, uh, exports and so forth. So they, 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 this is uh, basically what we call today as a, a an environmental uh, accountability and so you can count basically everything uh, uh, material flows co2 flows energy flows water flows uh, nitrogen phosphorus and so forth there are thousands and thousands of studies uh, which take this point of view about uh, one uh, one territory so this is for one year so this is uh, what what uh, they, they they present the physical the physical economy of Brussels for one year and but I was very interested about those kind of studies. Uh, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's completely different from what we, we, we've seen in mainstream economics. But at the same time, as a social scientist, uh, we are a bit disappointed, right? Because there are here no actors, no institutions, no power relations and so forth. So it's really physical, but uh, it's kind of uh, disappointing from a, a, scientist, a social scientist uh, uh, perspective. But, so this is, we can call this only metabolism and not, not a social metabolism. So the, this is only a, a, a certain uh, uh, accountability of flows. Um, you can do that for every kind of territory. You can, uh, you can study material flows uh, of a region, a city, a country, a continent, and so forth. So, uh, there is a, and you can even take a smaller scale, I don't know, the metabolism of, a, of a one building or one, one infrastructure or it can be any, anything. So um, that, that's the main, that's the starting point, let's say, of uh, social metabolism. Uh, you take one, you have one research quest question and you take one territory and you Consider some flows because you are interested. I don't know in CO2 or uh, uh, nitrogen flows, and you uh, uh, you count uh, flows. So you, you see the economy through uh, uh, those flows. You can I, I did that for uh, at the, the national scale for France. So this is the uh, uh, the, the framework uh, for the national territory, and. Here is a summary of uh, one uh, uh, for uh, one national economy. So you have domestic extraction coming from uh, uh, the from the country. So it, it it goes from the environment and it enters the economic system. So this is the economic system inside the the, the ecosystem. Um, you have imports for coming from abroad, uh, exports here. And then you have important uh, uh, flows uh, like uh, those uh, hidden flows uh, from trade. Uh, those hidden flows are all the uh, 
upstream flows which were necessary to, to produce all imported flows. For, uh, let's say, a computer, uh, uh, w the wave of this computer, I don't know, it's maybe uh, one, one kilo or two, two kilos. But if you, take all the, if you take into account all the hidden flows, then it, it weighs maybe, I don't know, 100 kilos or something. Or you can do that with cars and so forth. Uh, it's, it's, it's well known today because uh, uh, all the uh, carbon footprint, material footprints and so forth, take into account those flows, those hidden flows. Uh, from. And of course, every time you, you make such an analysis, you, you, you have to, it's really, really important to take those flows into account, spe specifically for uh, uh, the uh, rich countries, because they <laughs> offshore a lot of uh, pr uh, their production. So uh, they, uh, countries such as uh, France uh, has a very, very important hidden flow. Then you have some domestic hidden flows which are also interesting uh, and nobody cares about them. Uh, it's basically uh, uh, those flows are, are, are not taken into account because they don't have any value, monetary value. For instance, if you open a mine, you will, we, you will take a lot, millions and millions of tons of uh, earth or uh, uh, I don't know, a lot of materials before you begin to, to uh, 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 extract uh, uh, ore. And all those flows, all, all those necessary flows to, to begin to extract uh, your uh, materials are those hidden flows. And nobody cares, but it's huge also. For instance, in for, in, for many extractive countries, such as uh, uh, Chile or Canada, uh, uh, you have billions and billions of tons of uh, uh, those uh, domestic hidden flows. Then I will talk also today about uh, stocks, social, social economic stocks. Because uh, this flow pers perspective uh, need to take those stocks into account. So stocks are basically buildings, infrastructure, so all the uh, built environment, but also machines. For instance, uh, all the the um, all the, ma the the machines uh, which are uh, in uh, uh, necessary for production. So those are stocks. Just to to mention one number, uh, uh, just to. to uh, about stocks, the total plastic stock in the world uh, is uh, uh, twice, uh, uh, two times bigger than all the uh, animals on Earth. They are two, two times more plastic <laughs> than animals on Earth. So this is a, a kind of stuff. And uh, plastic is really, uh, uh, the, the production of plastic is really, really increasing, uh, as you probably know. So uh, with those basic uh, uh, indicators, you can do a lot of uh, interesting study. And I will just take those today uh, to, to, to present some, uh, some work. Um, then, of course, yeah, I didn't, I didn't mention the, the waste flow here, which is also very important. Now, uh, I want, before I, I present some works, I, I would like to uh, highlight the important heterogeneity in, inside the, the ecological economics. Uh, so first you have, so today ecological economics, the, 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 the whole field is basically, uh, uh, there is this word from uh, Clive Spash, which is a, a well-known uh, economist uh, in this field, which say, he said that uh, there is a mainstreaming of ecological economics. Because today the, the ecological economics uh, uh, field is dominated by uh, neoclassics. <laughs> so they, they, they just uh, they took uh, those flows into account and they said, okay, well, we, we, we will work with the energy flows. And it, it was not so difficult for them to take uh, uh, material flows, in, uh, biophysical flows into account. But you also have an alternative, uh, which is called social ecological economics, uh, which presents and study those flows uh, as uh, uh, and think uh, those biophysical flows are as embedded in social relations. So uh, here you think you you you, you find uh, the the interesting. Uh, Division. Yesterday I, I did a course and I presented this new graph, so I, I will present a graph for you. <laughs> uh, so let's say uh, the mainstream is here. So basic mainstream econ uh, 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 neoclassical economics. The first ecological economics, they, they, they took into account biophysical flows. 
But, so they, they did, let's say, this, this move. And today, the mainstream of, uh, I mean, the majority of ecological economics is still here. And uh, here, let's say you have uh, the power relations <laughs> axis. <laughs> so this is, uh, those are studies that, uh, uh, I mean, th those are cl classical uh, social science studies, like Marxist or uh, uh, sociologist or uh, all the, basically the social sciences are here. Uh, and, for instance, many didn't take into account the materiality of the world of, of social relations. And the region that I will talk about today is the, the, so this socio-ecological so, economics. They took both. So they, they take power relations into account and biophysical force. And they, they, they try to explain and to understand how those uh, uh, power relations are uh, embedded in uh, uh, biophysical flows and vice versa. And uh, for instance, I, I will, I don't know, is it clear? I tried yesterday, so I, I don't know if it, it's my second try uh, of uh, explaining the, the historical move, let's say, of uh, those fields. Um, and then today I will, for, for instance, I will present some uh, work uh, from uh, the Marxist field, which were here, okay? and. They, they did this, this, this uh, uh, move, let's say, okay? So uh, I will mainly talk about it. So, and now, I mean, in this, in this uh, big uh, subfield here, uh, the so so social ecological uh, economics, you have uh, feminist perspective, Marxist perspective, uh, uh, degrowth perspective, and so forth. So you have uh, all, all of them, they are, they are, I consider uh, them in this subfield. And uh, here, you still have like uh, engineers and people that count flows, but they don't care about power relations and they stay here. And for instance, m most of our governments, uh, uh, institutions, uh, 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 international institutions uh, are here. Okay, uh, Macron and uh, many many leaders, they they begin to 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 think about uh, this physical perspective, but they don't care about uh, power relations. Then I also want to mention that. And this is, this is the, basically the same division. When you talk about ecological economics, what does ecological mean, actually? And the division is, uh, uh, can, be, can be presented uh, <coughs> in the following way. The mainstream, they have uh, uh, an apolitical ecology, okay? Because they don't have power relations. Uh, so they don't have, they don't, they are really normative, they don't care about uh, history, institutions, and this is a green growth paradigm actually. So what they say basically is, is okay, the ecological crisis uh, uh, is a huge uh, optimization problem, we need to optimize uh, those flows and it will be alright, okay? So this is the green growth paradigm. Uh, uh, and this is called, uh, inside ecological economics, this is called industrial ecology. Industrial ecology. This comes from actually, I don't know if you know, heard about uh, conservationism, conservationism. Uh, so uh, it's an old uh, tradition uh, in ecology uh, coming from the US uh, in the 19th century. Uh, there was then, then a fight in the US uh, between preservationism and conservationism. But all those ecologies are quite from the north and from the US. And so conservationism uh, uh, believes that uh, the, we need a, a better uh, uh, we need to optimize uh, flows and we need, uh, so this is a very, really technocratic uh, perspective. And preservationism exists still today as well. Uh, the preservationism initially was uh, close to the, the wilderness imaginary in the US. So they, they wanted to, uh, a wild nature to protect wild nature and so forth. And this exists still today because uh, uh, it, it's, there are uh, important institutions uh, linked actually to the World Bank. Uh, for instance, they go to uh, some countries in Africa and they say to African countries, okay, you will, uh, we, we, we will help you with a little bit of money, but you need to attract tourists and then uh, uh, maybe you should uh, open some national parks, but, but without people. So you take those people away and uh, you create a wild uh, uh, park, you know? So this is, a, uh, this is an, an old tradition coming from the US. Actually, it's really racist because in the US they, they just killed uh, uh, Indians and they, they took them away because there were people living there in the Yellowstone, Yosemite, so the, the, all those famous parks uh, were not wild parks at all. It, it, there were people there and 
But uh, so this this was the the the, uh, the preservationist tradition. But the the conservationist uh, uh, pr tradition uh, is really hegemonic today. I mean, the, the, all all basically all the, the policies today are, are are really close to this uh, uh, old tradition. But so this is this is on a political ecology. But you have also political ecologies, of course. You have many political ecologies. Uh, what, I, what I call a political ecology, basically it's a, a polit uh, an ecology that considers power relations. Uh, and uh, so think about uh, gender inequalities, uh, 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 race, class, uh, 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 so all kinds of uh, inequalities. And uh, you have therein, in, the, in this political ecology, you have many possibilities, many different, uh, uh, yes, Perspectives, let's say. Uh, so you, I, I will talk a little bit about the environmental justice. Do you, uh, have you heard about this environmental justice? Yes, yeah, some of some of you. Okay, uh, which is really strong. I, I, I think uh, uh, it exists. I think it. Yeah, for the they did a lot, develop a lot of studies in the last twenty years. I think, and I will talk later about. Uh, they have an atlas about uh, environmental conflicts uh, around the world. Uh, and we will, I will link that with uh, social metabolism. And then you have also all the degrowth, past growth uh, literature and uh, many other uh, uh, literature. So uh, I wanted to make clear that uh, there is a big heterogeneity inside ecological economics and uh, you can adopt many different perspectives using the metabolism. Okay? So the metabolism is only a tool actually. It's only a, a, it, can, it can be helpful but you can do Many uh, uh, bullshit studies as well. <laughs> okay, uh, so here is one of them. Uh, it's a really classical example. <laughs> uh, I'm tired, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna be trash a little bit. No, uh, so this is a classical uh, example in industrial ecology. Uh, it's about uh, a sector called Kalumborg in Denmark. And so they, they, they took, uh, it, it's, it, it's an industrial district with many industries. And what they did for uh, 30 years now is like they, they used, they optimized, they optimized every flow in this district. So they took the, the waste uh, from in one industry to, to use uh, it uh, as a resource for another industry. They took the heat from another and they, so they linked, they, they, they make those uh, industrial symbiosis. And uh, okay, that, that, that was cool. And they call that uh, ecolo ecological. Uh, uh. But actually, uh, it's it's really weird because uh, they, if you look at uh, all the industries, uh, we are talking about a refinery, a power station, uh, uh, the ziproc uh, industry, the cement industry, and so forth. So, I mean, all all those industries cannot be. Uh, 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 Qualified as ecological, right? <laughs> so, um, but they they did indeed uh, uh, they optimized the, all those flows. But here, what what I want to uh, I want to yeah I want to highlight the fact that uh, there are hundreds of, of uh, studies like this, and basically they they don't care about history, about uh, uh, workers, about anything. They just they just want to optimize uh, flows. And um, yeah, so and it's 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 still the case today uh, uh, when we talk about uh, all those uh, uh, green solutions. Uh, 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 I don't know, green hydrogen, green blah blah blah. Uh, it's always they they want to optimize the CO two, and they they don't take uh, social relations into account. That, that, that's that's the point. Now, uh, so today I will present. Wow, I, 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 when, when did I begin? I begin it was 10, no? 15. Was it 10? Okay. Uh, <coughs> so I, I will present some, some works that uh, study the, the capital accumulation uh, long term dynamics. And I want to explain how they, they, they took uh, one old paradigm or one old framework and they. they they combine that with uh, uh, biophysical uh, uh, flows. So uh, here I mentioned just three, but I won't talk about uh, the three. Uh, I don't have uh, time enough. The first one is uh, an interesting literature called uh, World Ecology, uh, which took the world system developed by Brodel, Wallerstein, and other uh, uh, social scientists. 
So they, they basically uh, uh, explain the development of capitalism uh, not only through uh, centers and peripheries and unequal exchange, but also uh, adding uh, the ecological dimension. So they talk about uh, uh, ecological, ecologically uh, unequal exchange, and they explain that the, the, the centers uh, of, capi of the capital dynamics uh, uh, benefited, uh, absorbed, uh, billions of tons and a lot of energy from the rest of the world. And that, that's why they developed, actually. Um, it's kind... It's, the, the second one is very similar. Uh, uh, they, they adopted a very similar point of view. Um, and it's, it's the same. They, they took uh, work about uh, Latin America, for instance, and uh, dep dependency theories. And they develop uh, an ecological uh, uh, theory uh, from, from this uh, uh, dependency theory. Then the third one is the regulation theory. And it's the same, the regulation theory, if you think about this uh, little graph, they, they, they were really here. They, they never took uh, into account uh, any materiality in their, in their uh, uh, framework. So, and now they, I did some work and trying to, to understand uh, the importance of uh, uh, the materiality uh, for uh, uh, accumulation regimes. Now, I, I will insist here on two points. Uh, hidden flows, which I, which I introduced before. Uh, hidden flows of trade uh, and all the ecological footprints. And a little bit of, I will talk about material stocks. Now, let's go with the ecologically unequal exchange. So the thesis is really quite simple. So they explain that uh, there are asymmetric net transfer of resources, including labor, from peripheral to core areas of the global economic, um, economic system. So this is the main thesis. So what they say basically is that, for instance, uh, I don't know, the, the UK in the 19th century benefited from uh, cotton from the US. And uh, when uh, the UK was buying uh, for, uh, let's say, uh, $100 of uh, uh, goods coming from the US, uh, those $100 uh, uh, w w were, uh, uh, were equivalent, let's say, to, I don't know, a thousand um, tons, uh, a thousands of uh, acres, uh, uh, one million joule, and uh, one million hour of the work, for instance. And when the UK was selling for $100 to the US, the US wa was only uh, buying for, I don't know, uh, one ton, one joule, and uh, two hours, you, said, you know? And this, this, was, uh, 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 this was not uh, just for one year or uh, two years, but it was like uh, for uh, decades. So this is, uh, there are many empirical evidences about this. Uh, actually, what I like to remember is that the, the UK, uh, the territory of the UK was too small, actually, for all, the, all those uh, cotton fields, basically. So they, they didn't have space. So that's really... Uh, 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 so you can say, of course, they, 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 they could uh, uh, go uh, to other countries, uh, and they did, actually, of course, they, India, Egypt, uh, and all, all the colonies. But uh, those cotton fields were essential to the development of the UK uh, uh, capitalism. Uh, the same is true for France, uh, the same is true for other countries. Um, and on, on the opposite side, uh, the same is true for Latin America. But Latin America was, of course, exporting all uh, um, uh, those material flows. Uh, and uh, there were millions and millions of hours of uh, work hours uh, that benefited uh, to uh, France, uh, UK, uh, uh, the US, uh, Japan, and other countries. And they, they, they did a, a, a recent research in 2021, which is really wonderful, uh, for the last 25 years. And so they show, for instance, that the high income countries absorbed 200 billions of tons, so gigaton is billions of tons, from the rest of the world. They imported they benefited also from billions of acres, and they accumulated as w uh, at the same time a monetary trade surplus of uh, more than so 1,200 trillion of US dollar accumulated, not not for one year, for, for 25 years. So 
This is uh, an ecologically up and equal exchange, right? They, 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 they have a, a profit from the trade, monetary profit, and they absorb all of the uh, biophysical flows. And you can link that with uh, all the debates about uh, environmental eco inequalities, ecological debts, and many other uh, debates. Now, uh, what? Yes? Can you just explain a bit about the methodology for the studies? How is, are these flows, the costs, what are they normalized to with protein exchange rates and all of that, purchasing power parity? How are these normalized? In this precise, in this precise case, I, I don't know for the for the minute, uh, for the surplus for the monetary flow. Yes, but in general, in studies, because I, so a lot of studies like these that say that okay, this amount of money or resources appropriated material flows, I can understand, but the accumulation of uh, value. So, how is value defined, and to what are these exchanges normalized? Yeah, I guess I guess they they just like take uh, all the flows, monetary flows in dollars, then they, they, all the, they take into account inflation and so forth. I don't know, I, 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 I don't know about uh, this study, but okay. I think with basic tools, they just know, uh, look at, I don't know, for instance, the trade surplus between France and uh, Canada, I, I can see that in three minutes on the internet or with another country, mm -hmm. then you take all, the, all those countries. So they, they, they group, High income countries in one group, they, they, they unify them, and then they, they look all the flows with other countries. Uh, I think it was really basic, I think. I don't know. <laughs> because you, you, what's, what's the difficulty, you think? The, the normalization of. Because of inflation or because of. Uh, of, everything, of inflation, of, floating, of purchasing power parity, so the, uh -huh. the, the globalization argument that. The causality of linking outcomes, development outcomes in different countries with you know, with, with globalization. So, one, you know, because things because of purchasing power parity, even if less wages are paid, people are still getting more prosperous in developing countries. So, different sides have they use the same kinds of, but they have different arguments. They have different conclusions. So, I'm wondering what the differences in these definitions are across. Different narratives around globalization. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's my physical flow, but yeah, no, it's, it's physical flow. It's not monetary. No, there is also. There is. They, they also. Yeah, in this study, they they also looked at uh, monetary monetary flows to show that uh, even in monetary flows, the high income countries uh, benefited because they they export uh, uh, high uh, value added goods to other countries basically. But uh, maybe we can discuss that in the discussion. But but uh, th there are. You can uh, well, you can say that this theory has some drawbacks. Maybe uh, because there are rich, in, uh, extractive countries, for instance, uh, you have inequalities inside one country also. So this is a quite nationalist perspective. You take you you take one country uh, as if it was like an actor, but it's not. Uh, so there are many drawbacks. But I mean the global. The global uh, thesis is really strong, I, I think, because it has a really a, a strong empirical evidence for centuries, for many countries. Uh, and that's what I wanted to show now. So this, is, this graph I made it for France. This is the physical trade balance for France. So this is the trade balance, the classical trade balance, but in tons. So I, 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 I collected all the data since uh, the 1830. 1830. Uh, and just yeah, the, 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 the message here is that uh, France always, always benefited from the materials from uh, abroad. Always in its history. It's not the case for the UK, for instance. In, in the UK uh, exported a lot of coal for some years and from some periods. No, France not. France is a really parasite. <laughs> it's depending uh, uh, of the rest of the world all the time. And uh, the, the grey the colour here uh, represents uh, fossil fuels. So, of course, uh, France is completely dependent from the rest of the world because there is no more uh, coal extraction in France. Uh, here, the, the blue color represents metals, green represents biomass, and yellow uh, uh, construction materials or non-metallic non minerals, we say. So, uh, so th this, this, this is an empirical evidence for France. And I, there are also... 
uh, studies that show specifically, for instance, you can study the uh, the exchanges of, uh, between France and its colonies, and there there you can show again that. Uh, 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 this thesis is 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 uh, is, uh, is true is verified and the, the so actually it's, it's quite I mean it's common sense I mean uh, we all believe that the colonies were important and so forth but I, I think that the, the, those those uh, uh, those work are are still important for uh, 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 our debates uh, today so this is the same graph but uh, ugly uh, for uh, Japan. So it's another study, and it's the same. Well, Japan is, of course, an island, but Japan uh, depends totally from the rest of the world, So because they, they imported uh, uh, all uh, their uh, goods from the rest uh, of the world. So it's another example. So, and then if you look at uh, South America, then, of course, you find the opposite graph. So it's still the same, uh, physical trade balance. And then you see that uh, those countries are exporting <laughs> a lot of materials to the rest of the world. So those small countries, for instance, okay, Nicaragua, it's a bit strange, El Salvador, but if you look at Ecuador, Uruguay, Paraguay, uh, Colombia, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, and so forth, so most of them, Argentina is the first one, most of them, they also uh, confirm uh, this, uh, uh, this thesis about uh, uh, the ecological uh, uh, exchange. Then, of course, there are the, the, this thesis, uh, you can uh, be more precise. Uh, for instance, I don't know if you are aware about the debates uh, in uh, South America. I come from Brazil, so I, 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 I like to talk about South America. Um, there is this debate about extractivism and then neo-extractivism. And this shows, this shows the, the, uh, the, ar the argument of the neo-extractivism. Basically, they, they, in the 60s, South America was exporting its flows to uh, the US and Europe, and today, the main flow goes, goes to China. And so there is a, a dependency now. Uh, it's not, not Europe and the US which are uh, uh, so important anymore for uh, South America, but uh, really China. And so they, 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 there, is a, there is a paper which is called, I think, the Beijing Consensus, because there are, you know, the well-known uh, Washington Consensus. And so they talk about this Beijing Consensus in uh, uh, Latin America. Okay, so this is a, another example of, uh, I think, a, an interesting uh, theory uh, based on social metabolism. And then you can link that with uh, environmental conflicts, and they do that uh, a lot in South America. Uh, for instance, they look at uh, mining, uh, uh, ore extraction, uh, petrol extraction, uh, uh, coal, and so forth. And or, or uh, of course, uh, biomass, soy, or many, uh, uh, many uh, goods from uh, the agricultural sector. And they link the environmental conflicts to those, uh, 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 to those uh, activities. There is this envir environmental justice atlas, which I, men I mentioned before. Uh, so they, what they do, it's a collaborative uh, uh, site, so everyone can, uh, uh, can contribute to this uh, site. You can go uh, to, to and assess it. Uh, and they map all environmental conflicts in the world. So there are more than 3,000, uh, I think, uh, uh, conflicts in this uh, website. And they divide it, uh, it uh, so there is a nuclear conflict, uh, waste management, infrastructure, and built environments, water, water uh, water, tourism, biodiversity, industrial, fossil fuel, and so forth. And, uh, and this is really, there is a strong link here between uh, the social metabolism, the global economy, social metabolism, and those conflicts. And you can, for instance, uh, as a sociologist, go uh, to uh, one of the, those conflicts and study this conflict and relate that to uh, uh, the, uh, the global economy, for instance, or other, other economical uh, issues. Uh, so uh, this, this is quite interesting. And they did that also for some uh, firms. So, that's, uh, so they took some big firms, for instance, the Valley. Uh, Valley is a, a huge, uh, maybe the biggest one, I don't know, a, a, a firm in uh, Brazil. Uh, it extracts uh, iron. And, uh, and they look at all the conflicts 
and they, they from I mean and linking that with the Valley uh, film. So you can see that uh, on their website. And it's really fascinating, the, the, the work they, they do. Uh, the Valley, for instance, they have the mine, they have the railway company, they have a harbor, so they have, uh, I mean, all the, the, the infrastructure to export uh, uh, b uh, millions and millions of tons of iron uh, to, to Europe and, uh, and China. Now, uh, I have still 10 minutes or something. No? I would like to to talk about uh, stocks, material stocks, mm -hmm. and some inf important lock-in effects or path uh, dependency. Um, so stocks, I, I, as I said, are all, build, all the buildings and all the infrastructure and all the uh, uh, machines and actually all, all the objects. But it's mainly buildings and, uh, it, and uh, large infrastructure. So if you look at the global extraction, this is only extraction. So th those are material flows, uh, global. So there, are, there is no imports and, or exports here. So this is from uh, the beginning of the 20th century until uh, 2015. Uh, so uh, you see an exponential, uh, you don't see any decrease <laughs> any time. Maybe the COVID did a little, a little decrease in this uh, curve now, but it was really small. Uh, so, well, this is quite uh, depressing, right? Uh, <laughs> the, because the, we, we, in the literature, they, they, they usually they talk about the great acceleration here in the 60s and 70s. But what we can see also is the really super great acceleration from 2000, you know, so uh, uh, the, the steepest uh, uh, part is, uh, 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 is the recent part, actually. So the, 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 the extraction, the global extraction is really, really huge. What we can see also here is that the biomass is not increasing that much. It's, co it's really correlated to uh, population. Uh, Fossil fuels are increasing well, uh, yeah, they, they, so this is the, uh, the fossil, fuel, uh, uh, fossil fuel flows. The metals are here in blue, so there is also a huge uh, increase in the metal uh, extraction. And then the gray part are all the uh, non-metallic minerals, and this is uh, mainly sand and gravel. So globally, we extract mainly sand and gravel. This is the most used uh, uh, material on earth by far uh, and this is quite interesting because so it means that today we extract for buildings and not for food or for to uh, to heat uh, uh, our uh, uh, buildings or uh, we mainly extract for uh, uh, to build a house and large infrastructure and as I will show later to repair them now if you look at the material stocks, uh, it's the same uh, study uh, from uh, 2019. Uh, the increase is even bigger than material flows. Th so th those are, th they accumulate, of course. So th this, this, this uh, the previous graph is uh, an annual, annual, gra uh, uh, annual flows. For, for instance, in 2000, we extract, the world extracted, I don't know, 55 billions. In 60, uh, 25 billion, and so forth. But in the, this graph, it's an accumulation, so it's uh, uh, only uh, it's only incre increasing. And again, as I mentioned, you see that uh, the world is made of sand and gravel because uh, so aggregates are a kind of gravel. So this part, the the the, uh, the this huge part is concrete, so it's again sand and gravel. Then asphalt, asphalt is bitumen with sand and gravel. <laughs> so all this part from our, the global stock is made from sand and gravel. Okay, the rest of the world, is, uh, so the rest is bricks, wood, glass, plastics, and so forth. Uh, the total is quite, it's about uh, a thousand billions of ton. And there is this recent paper showing that the human made materials now outweigh the earth entire biomass. So there is more building than plants on the world. So, ciao. <laughs> uh, no, this is, this is quite uh, depressing. Uh, 
I, I, did you understand the, the so if you let's say if you count all forest all animals all everything all the biomass on earth uh, it, it, it will be lighter than all the buildings. Okay, uh, so stocks are, are, are increasing uh, quite fast, but again, this is only metabolism. So what I, what I was interested in is to explain that and to have a, a, a history of those stocks and, and to, to uh, understand uh, what we do with these stocks and so forth. So that, that's, that's why... Uh, 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 I, I, actually, I, I did my, my PhD uh, about large infrastructure, so I, I, because because I saw those those graphs, and you you can't you can't see ah yeah, yeah plastic is there, plastic is about four billions of tons, and there are thousands of billions of tons the total stock. Okay, and ah yeah, I didn't mention, but roads, only roads, represent a third of the global stock, only ro the roads. So the roads are really, really a huge, huge environmental issue. Really, one of the most important political uh, uh, issues we have are uh, roads. Maybe I, I will talk about it in the discussion. So why, why do stocks are really important? Uh, because we need to maintain them. We need to repair them all the time. We need to repair all the time every road. We need to repair uh, buildings as well, uh, bridges, uh, and so forth. This is an example uh, for the metabolism of the European Union in 2009. And they, they took into account buildings, roads, and railways. So three, three types of stocks, the important uh, stocks. Here I can mention that roads, roads are more important than buildings. I, I was quite surprised, I don't know about you, but because when, we li when, when you live in a city, you, you see all those buildings and you think, I, I, I'm, well, I was maybe naive, but I, I was thinking, that the buildings were more, more important than roads, but they are not. So the roads in the European Union represent 39 billions of tons and the buildings 35, so it's quite uh, close, but the roads are heavier. Then what is interesting in this graph, they, they put stocks at the center of the study and they look at uh, the flows uh, which represent an expansion of those stocks. So construction of new roads, for instance, or the construction of a new airport or a new uh, building and so forth. And the expansion of the stocks, if you look at uh, buildings, it represents uh, 207 million. Well, okay, we don't care about uh, the numbers. But what is important here is that the flow for maintenance and replacement is way, way, way bigger than the, the flow for new stocks. So it means that we extract sand and gravel to repair roads today. We basically open new careers, we basically, we basically extract. So that's the main activity, main physical activity in the European Union. Not to construct new uh, buildings, but to repair roads. So that, that's what, uh, that, was, that was really, uh, 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 yeah, it was a big surprise for me. I, I did not th think about that. And uh, that was the huge part of my, my PhD as well. I was really interested in to understand why, why uh, uh, there, there is a, such a, a flow to maintain and uh, repair uh, all those stocks. So there is a, 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 an important lock-in uh, effect linked to those stocks, you know, because the stocks needs all the time new flows, all the time. And they try, of course, to recycle, to reuse a lot of waste, and so forth, but they, they, they can't. It's only, uh, how do you say, uh, sub-cycle? Uh, if you don't, uh, uh, I don't know. I, Vicious cycle. Huh? Vicious cycle. No, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of vicious cycle, but uh, it's, it's, it's not a. Uh, in French, we say recycle, recycle and sous-cycle. Sous-cycle is like you reuse the material, but for a, 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 a not the same activity. For instance, they, they use the, uh, 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 demolition waste, they put that uh, in a, a, a sub layer of a road. They, they, they don't. They it's down cycling. Down, down. Ah, down cycling. Yeah, down cycling. Yeah, yeah, down cycling, exactly, yeah. So they, they basically, they, they hope the circular economy paradigm, they, they're like, oh yeah, but it's all right, we, we're gonna use all those, those wastes and reuse them uh, to, to repair the roads and the buildings. But actually, they, it's only uh, down cycling. Well, so that's another, I think, interesting study using uh, social metabolism and uh, uh, 
to, to understand it in a poetic uh, uh, manner. There are many, many works about uh, those talks, especially in China. I don't know, there, there is a huge uh, literature about uh, stocks in China, and they, they count everything uh, for uh, high-speed rail, for uh, roads, for buildings, and, uh, and so you have all those flows, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's quite beautiful, but all the time what I want to explain is that, for me, this is only the first step. Then you, uh, you understand what, what's the, the, the political aspects uh, uh, behind those, uh, those flows. Uh, I will skip this one. Those talks, what I find interesting is that I discovered that in the literature, they call those talks, uh, uh, and they define them sometimes as a fixed capital. Uh, even roads. In France, for instance, uh, I, I discovered that in my work, the state uh, conceived all the roads as a fixed capital. And that's interesting because when they maintain roads, they maintain fixed capital as well. You know, so that, that's an important one. And, and it's the same for machinery. Okay, it's a stock and they need to maintain all these machines and they, they need to uh, repair them all the time. And there is a, a, a there are strong locking effects of fixed capital, which are also uh, really important for the uh, yeah, future uh, research use. Uh, for instance, uh, there is a, they show that if, you, if we maintain this fixed capital and if we use it until the, the, their planned uh, lifetimes, uh, it will exceed the uh, 1.5 uh, 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 degrees budget. Only if we use all the machines and uh, if, we, uh, uh, if we use uh, all the, uh, the roads as they are uh, uh, today. So it means this is a really recent debate and there is now a consensus to say that it's really a, like a logical consensus that one needs, we need, we need to uh, close stocks. We need to decrease the stocks. And we need to stop using those stocks. We need to stop using, we need to close airports. We need to close uh, a lot of roads. We need to close, uh, uh, otherwise we will for sure exceed uh, the uh, 1.5 or two degrees budget. And that's, that's uh, uh, really interesting. So there are many uh, political uh, propositions, uh, normative propositions. I mentioned here some of them. Uh, they basically they all start with okay, what what are the basic needs, and how can we satisfy those needs with the minimal amount of of stocks? Because those stocks, of course, uh, they uh, an, an hospital is a stock. Okay, uh, school, uh, this university. Uh, so we can define democratically or, uh, uh, or which, what, what are the, the stocks uh, we need to, uh, uh, for those uh, basic uh, needs. So they, there is a debate about the decent living standards. There is this uh, donut uh, uh, proposition, the Buen Vivir. The, there is now a proposition about planning the growth. And when they talk about planning the growth, it takes uh, also those, uh, uh, material stocks uh, uh, into account. So it, it's, it's really, uh, I wanted to present, like, this is really a really recent uh, debate and I, I think it, it's quite interesting. In France, there was uh, one or two books now, uh, yeah, explaining, okay, uh, uh, the ecology is not only about uh, how we will preserve uh, some natural spaces or uh, so forth, but also how we will close uh, 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 ref refineries, uh, nuclear plants, uh, and uh, many other stocks, and uh, and it will be tough actually because there is there are technical issues uh, uh, and many uh, 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 economic interests uh, and political interests. So th this is this is the main debate about stocks. Do I have still five minutes? Or yeah, okay, cool. Uh, now I also wanted to show another way to use social metabolism uh, maybe with uh, in a sociologist 
perspective, uh, so social economic uh, perspective. And again, I want to highlight the interdisciplinary uh, 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 work here. Uh, because it, this is, uh, I, I will show really briefly uh, one work I did. And again, I was using uh, social metabolism with political ecology, with political economy, uh, and mixing that with uh, environmental history. And I think it's, it's a, a nice way uh, to uh, develop no, new uh, uh, researchers. So basically, you can take any flow for your study, you are interested in, I don't know, electronic waste for one region, you, you are interested in uh, agriculture, we are interested in, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, CO2 or uh, stocks. Or and uh, I, I took uh, those five flows in my, my PhD. Then you, you, are, you, have, you will quickly find which are the main actors, main institutions, what are the social practices linked to those flows, and you can uh, quickly find uh, the power relations uh, because you, you for instance, I don't know you, you I, I, I had I had the state for instance and the, the the one administration all the time in my study and then I, I could see the important actors and the important firms and uh, and all the the work uh, they they did um, and I was interested again in sand and gravel for uh, those large infra infrastructures. So again, sun and gravel is the largest uh, extraction in France. Uh, today we have only two type of flows in France, we have biomass and sun and gravel, and that's it, because there is no more metal and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and fossil fuel anymore. And so first I collected all the data about sun and gravel. So this is uh, per capita, so I, I, I avoided the, the demographic uh, effect here. So you can see that uh, it, it was multiplied by seven or eight uh, between in 25 years, uh, from 48 to 74 or something. The total sand and gravel extraction in France was about 20 billions of tons. And this, this is way more than any flows in France. Uh, again, so this is the same graph, the same curve, uh, the blue one. And here I, I presented some other important flows for the French economy, coal. Uh, cereals and uh, iron ore, so there was an important extraction of iron. And you, you see the difference is really, really big. So this is by far the most important flow uh, in France. Now, I was, I was really curious about the, the effects of this extraction, uh, about environmental conflicts uh, and so forth. So I, I wanted to, to study uh, th th those act, uh, important farms actors and uh, uh, involved in, in, in this extraction, the, the quarries and uh, all the firms. And what I discovered first is that the, the rate of extraction were really huge. That's why I defend in my, in my, my PhD. Uh, I have uh, my, so this is a one, argu one, yeah, one argument, is that there, there was an ordinary extractivism in France. And I wanted to use this concept of extractivism, which is normally used in Latin America. Because, for instance, the extraction, uh, sand, sand was mainly extracted in rivers in France. Uh, and I discovered that the, the factor, uh, the, the, so I, 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 I need first to explain uh, why, there are, why there is sand in, in one river. So basically, it's, it's uh, the erosion, the natural er erosion, sediments come all the time uh, uh, along the river. And uh, today there is a debate about sun extractivism uh, all around the world and mainly in South, Southeast Asia. And I, I discovered that the levels of sun mining exceed natural sediment supply by up to a factor of seven in the lower Mekong uh, River. So it, it means that there is seven, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the extraction uh, of uh, is yeah it means that it's seven times the, the natural uh, uh, flow uh, coming into the river, and in the Loire River, one of the most important uh, uh, river in in France, the, the, this factor for 50 years was five. I I, I found that in my my archives, and in, in the 70s it was 12. So way way bigger than today. This huge extractivism in uh, uh, Southeast Asia. So that, I found that that was really, really interesting. 
and so basically they, they took all the sand of the river. <laughs> basically there, were the, there was no more uh, uh, sand in the, in the Loire and all other uh, river uh, as well in France. Another point is that uh, it's a low value extraction. The sand is, has no, not a, 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 a it's, it's, it's a quite simple uh, commodity. And it, so the, 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 there were many, there were thousands of small firms extracting all the time, everywhere in France. There were more than 12,000 12, firms extracting sand in every river in France. So it was huge. And there were many environmental conflicts. So everywhere, uh, the, the, the people, uh, the inhabitants, uh, the, the, uh, some uh, uh, deputies, uh, some uh, associations were protesting. There were, there were many oppositions. And it was all local conflicts there were the, because it's really a local extraction. That's why I, 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 I did a, an environmental history of sand mining in France uh, using all of this, uh, this framework. And you see, I, I took sand and gravel as a question. So that's why I, 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 that's what I wanted to, to highlight today. You can just take one flow as a question. Why, why did, did we extract so many sand and gravel? And who? And where? You know? And we, what, what kind of, of effects? And what kind of conflicts? And wh what kind of power relations can you find there? between? So social metabolism is only this tool to uh, develop one uh, study uh, after. So I, I decided to, to, to use archives, but you can do, of course, uh, with, uh, all, uh, with other tools. So here is uh, <laughs> some, some images. Uh, so it, it was really simple, you know, some tree, tree machinery, uh, four people, and they were extracting one million tons of a year in many, many places. Uh, so this is just an illustration of this really ordinary Extraction. I call it ordinary also because uh, it's it's quite far from the the really violent extractivism you can find in Latin America, for instance, with uh, uh, many uh, uh, pep people are, are killed and uh, there are uh, par uh, paramilitars or, or the, uh, uh, the police and many uh, uh, other violent aspects. And here is it was really kind of smooth. Uh, there were conflicts, but it was like, okay, we, we, just, we are just extracting everywhere sand and gravel. And, uh, and, and, uh, yeah, and another point, well, as I mentioned, is that in the recent year, I was al also surprised, but because it did not decrease that much. I was thinking, okay, after, in the 60s, France was building a lot of uh, 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 buildings, uh, infrastructure, so it makes sense. I mean, we, we all... We all know this uh, uh, great acceleration period, but then why? Why? Why did, this is not decreasing? And this is because main, we have we need to maintain the buildings. So I, I link all those uh, uh, framework together, and it was obvious. And today, for instance, in France, you, you, the, the country does not uh, construct a lot of large infrastructure, but it need to it maintains all the roads, and this is why we extract a lot still. Well. So this is only, I just wanted to, to highlight this uh, uh, work. Uh, and here I think I, I, I could link all the frameworks I mentioned uh, in this presentation. Um, so you have this ordinary extractivism, which is a material flow, which goes to material stocks, which I, I mentioned, and maintenance of uh, those stocks, and mainly uh, uh, large infrastructure, and large infrastructure are made to uh, uh, transport commodities worldwide, <laughs> then you, you, see, you, you can link that with extractivism in glo the global south because uh, uh, to, to have all, all these uh, uh, big uh, har harbors and uh, all, the, um, all the tankers and all the, the big ships uh, need huge infrastructure. So you can link all those frameworks together and you can link that with the ecological, uh, 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 ecologically uh, unequal exchange. So I, I, found, I found it was, it was interesting to, to conclude uh, with, uh, with that. So yeah, I will briefly conclude with this slide. So yeah, I did not mention there are many limits and drawbacks to the social metabolism. And the main one for me is the quantitative reductionism. Because you, 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 there is first on the reductionism 
I, I mentioned uh, before, like the, the the economy is reduced to flows. So if you if you do like the mainstream uh, ecological eco economy, uh, 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 in, uh, if you adopt the mainstream ecological economies framework, but there is also a reduction to the the mass because. What matters is what, what is the, 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 the products which, which are the, the most uh, uh, heavier. So, for instance, I always mention that you cannot see nuclear here in any, in, in, in any study because it's, it's too light. You cannot, you cannot see uranium flows. Yeah, you, of course you can find them, but since it does not appear here, you can, you can think that it's not important. And it is, of course, because the, the qualitative aspect matters as well. So this is, I mean, for me, the, the main limit of uh, uh, social metabolism. Uh, so yeah, for me, you can use social metabolism as a question to social sciences. It can help also to answer questions. And uh, I think it's really nice uh, to, to make inter interdisciplinary works. Uh, and the most important point is to understand the link between social structure and, uh, uh, and power relations with uh, biophysical flows. That's, I mean, uh, in, in my opinion, the, the, the most important, uh, the most important uh, aspect to, to study. And I have a book coming. So I, I, I wanted to mention here, <laughs> well, it will be in French, so sorry, uh, in April 2024. Well, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can mention that thanks to Melo, uh, one of the PhD which is offered within the framework of the Epoch Doctoral Network is about the North-South social metabolism uh, to be supervised by our colleagues. Dominique? No. Yeah, but our colleagues in, uh, in Barcelona, so mm. Jason Nickel and, uh, ah, right. and Dominique Biedenhofer uh, from Vienna. Vienna and the Agence Française de Développement. Uh, so it's, I think it's a ah nice right. one. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. Thanks to you. <laughs> uh, so, questions? Yes, Yaksh. Um, it's actually related to something that um, I'm Yaksh, uh, I'm from India. Um, and uh, it's actually related to one of the things that you conclude with, um, with nuclear. Um, what I could, and this is also like a question I had in the beginning on the methodology. Um, that energy in general is something which is usually looked out of the social metabolism process, so to say. Because um, if you, like the example that I had in mind was to look at petroleum, for example, because we do take into account the mass of it in stock when we look at energy, but on the inflow side on, of the matrix, it's still something natural which which is in the... Which is, which is fossil, like it's, it's planet, planetary mass, right? And it is part of the, the, the biosphere, it is part of the, the energy system, which we are playing with. So uh, it's hard for me to understand how we take that into account because it has a lot of important implications for the carbon cycle, for the carbon balance, for the historical carbon debt, um, and extractivism, because if you look at Western presence in even India, for example, uh, we have sold our forests and our mines and uh, part of our reservoirs to private companies in the West. Um, so I'm not sure how that fits into it and if that's a, an important limitation. It would be interesting to address that. I, I'm not sure I, I understood well. Do, do you ask if they take energy flows into account, basically? Yes, and yes, they do. Of if they don't, like, because I don't see um, things like um, physical energy quantities being included in the inflow and outflow matrices. Ah, no, no, they, they did. Uh, of course, I, I just did not mention here because I, I focus on some studies, but there are hundreds and hundreds of papers about energy. A lot of, I mean, it's may, maybe the main topics uh, uh, in, uh, in the social metabolism because of climate change so uh yeah yeah of course uh, and they they all they they see they, they show a lot of graphs uh in joules and with many with many metrics because energy you you can uh, uh, define energy uh, and measure energy with many different metrics 
And uh, yeah, yeah, they, they do it, of course, of course. Here, here we, we, we also, we only see uh, uh, fossil fuels here in, in the extraction part. Yeah, but uh, this is because I only mentioned three studies, but yeah, there are thousands of studies about energy, a lot, a lot. And, and they, they study emissions and every kind of energy and every kind of infrastructure and every kind of power plant and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, they, they do, they do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I did, actually, I did one work with uh, people from Vienna, an historical work. We, we wanted to, uh, indeed, to uh, study in a, this historical perspective using social metabolism, the transformation in France uh, of the energy system and the oilification of the energy system in France. So how they, con how they build uh, 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 refineries, how they, they build uh, uh, the, the um, gasoduc uh, uh, pipelines uh, uh, and so forth. And so all the, polit all the actors, political actors uh, with a geopolitical uh, uh, perspective as well. And we took into account joules. We, in our graph, we have uh, all the joules. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it's possible, of course. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I just choose here to mention flows, material flows, stocks, and yeah, that's it. And trade. I was interested in, in showing this uh, trade debate, uh, which is really important, I think, for any discussion about the transition. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm not sure what, because he was asking about the limit from the energy. There's a physical limit, which even if you measure it in joules, this flow is accounting for mass. Yeah. But as far as I understand, the energy limit is the thermodynamic aspect, which is different from um, flows, material flows. That, that is also a big uh, thing in ecological economics. Right? The th thermodynamic limit to ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, the entropy, the entropy, entropy yeah. That's what he was asking about. So uh, about the quality of the energy. That, that's what. That's what you, um, you, you. Just the limit to recycling energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there are, there are uh, uh, many debates ab about that as well. So and I, I think I understood now. Yeah, so because of course, uh, um, so this is the second law of the thermodynamics, which say that the, the uh, quality of energy basically is uh, uh, decreasing. Uh, uh, and this is uh, 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 in any process, in any uh, production process. But yeah, and they started, actually, the ecological economics started with this law. So yeah, they, they are, of course, interested in that. But this is a limit. That is a, the this is the quality limit, let's say, from all those uh, from this reductionism, reductionism to quantity. Uh, 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 avoid the quality debates, and uh, uh, this is yeah. I, I would say this is the, the a, a huge limit indeed. Yeah, yeah. But but I just wanted to make sure that uh, uh, clear that uh, they they take energy into account. That, that's that's. Perfect. All right. So. My question is, um, sorry if it's going to be a bit long, but um, a lot discussion in ecological economics is a bit sometimes skeptical of having a, a theory of value to analyze uh, exchange between, between parts. Like Togesco always emphasizes that, that is a production always has a big quality change, and I see that it's very Marxist influence. So I'd like to know how, which theory of value guides uh, social metabolism, how do they answer to these objections that Georgescu did in the 70s regarding that, no, we should abandon the theory of value and see production only as a thermodynamic process? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, uh, Half Omborg will respond to you. So this is an author, uh, he, he's a Marxist, but he does not uh, take the, the, theory of, the Marxist theory of value. He, he, he doesn't believe in this uh, Marxist theory, so which is based on labor, as we know. Um, and I, I, I like uh, his work, so he, his name I, I will write here, because I, I, I don't know if I pronounce it well. Hornborg. He was the director of uh, Andreas Mann, maybe you heard about Andreas Mann. Um, and he worked a lot of, about uh, uh, an equal exchange uh, uh, also. When, when I mentioned the cotton fields, it, it, it's uh, his work, uh, of Alf, Alfenborg. Um, so yeah, uh, do we need a theory of value? Uh, can we avoid the Marxist theory of value? Yeah, I, I believe I, I believe so. There are many attempts to 
Yeah, to establish a theory, a theory value based on biophysical flows, on, on <laughs> biophysical metrics, which is wrong, I, I, in my opinion. I, I, I think there are process of valorization, but uh, I, I, there, I think this is my... After reading a, a really nice French uh, uh, Marxist called uh, André Orléans, I don't know if he, he is well known, uh, uh, abroad, <laughs> uh, uh, André Orléans, yeah. Uh, he, 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 he is Marxist, but he, he wrote a book about the theory, Marxist theory of value, explaining that there is, n there is no substance in value. There are only social processes that evaluate. Yeah. And I, I believe so. I, I believe you, 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 there is, because they, they try to say, oh yeah, uh, this, this commodity has a value because it, it contains tons of jewels or works or hours or, and so forth. And uh, yeah, and I believe it's, it's, it's tough to, to admit that uh, if, from a realistic point of view, because people can evaluate many objects and without any consideration of biophysical flows and because uh, uh, it, it, it will depend on uh, uh, cultural, social uh, uh, relations. So there is a debate about uh, theory of value, uh, and there, there are many attempts. Um, but yeah, in my opinion, uh, there is there is no need to 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 use the Marxist theory of value, nor any uh, ecological theory of value. Uh, I, I, as I said, I, I don't I don't think uh, there is an object an objective uh, uh, metric you can use to define the value of one of any good um, and and I, I recommend the response of uh, Alf Onborg because he was really uh, he's an anthropologist actually and uh, he was uh, yeah he was in interested in this debate and he was uh, yeah he was discussing with other Marxists of course um, and there were there are also attempts uh, there were many attempts to say that the, the real value is the energy, for instance, saying that the, the, you can base every, every uh, good on the energy it contains. And, uh, but it's the same, you, you can, you, why not? But why not use the information? Why not use uh, other, I don't know, the quantity of CO2, the quantity of... Uh, I, I think with the André Orléans argument, uh, saying that any, uh, there, is on, there are only uh, uh, processes of evaluation uh, uh, and uh, any theory based on the substance inside uh, 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 the good uh, is is a uh, yeah is is a uh, is a not uh, it's not uh, an inaccurate uh, is an inaccurate uh, theory, but it's a debate. It's a, uh, yeah, André Orléans. Yeah, yeah. I, I unfortunately he I don't know if uh, his books. You can find his books in uh, in English. Um, French is close enough to Portuguese. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 the, the, his best book is uh, L'Empire de la Valeur. L'Empire de la Valeur. Okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> um, it an interesting observation in, in the end that um, concerning nuclear uranium, for example, doesn't... doesn't um, uh. Show prominently under this sort of um, sort of analysis, and I am aware that that is one of the arguments of what pro nuclear would um, would use. So <coughs> I'd like to ask you if you just elaborate a bit on um, how can a social metabolism approach framework deal with nuclear energy and its costs? Uh, good question. <laughs> I, 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 for years now, I, 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 I want to find a student uh, to make a, <laughs> a master or, uh, uh, or a PhD about this, because I think this is, a, 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 especially for France, because uh, as you know, maybe uh, uh, France has a really important uh, nuclear sector. And in all my, th th that's why I was really disappointed when I, I, I study uh, material flows for France, because <laughs> Uh, here you can you can't see any any um, any impact of the, uh, nuclear. Well, you can in the in the flows because the the nuclear uh, the pro nuclear argument to say that, that we avoided a lot of uh, uh, oil imports because of nuclear. Well, so what what can we do? 
I I will suggest to yeah first you can you can find imports of uranium it's tough actually because when I did that uh, it's uh, uh, military information for sometimes it was uh, uh, forbidden to to, to uh, uh, reveal uh, all the uranium flows for so when 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 I went to the um, uh, archives to see to find the, the trade flows. Uh, uh, the nuclear line was al always like a dashed line, you know, there, there was nothing. I was like, mm -hmm, curious. Uh, uh, and and uh, nuclear, uh, uh, uranium and um, weapons. You, you, you want, it's tough to find uh, good information about weapons. Well, so I, I think today you can find uh, where does the uranium come from. Uh, it's quite clear. It, it, it comes from Kazakhstan mainly today, uh, a little bit from Niger, but I think today <laughs> there is no more Canada. And then what, what can you do? I mean, there are people saying, yeah, you can, you can uh, take also into account all the concrete needed to build the, the power plants. But it's not that much. No, no, it's not that much. Then you can also go to the uh, uranium mines, okay, so that's maybe huge. And then you can, uh, if you adopt a, a qualitative uh, uh, perspective, you can, for instance, go to Kazakhstan and, I don't know, uh, uh, look at the, the effects in the river or on the population and uh, uh, interview uh, population and uh, media actors. and. You, you can link that with uh, uh, health issues, uh, with, uh, you, you know, but yeah, I, I don't know, I, 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 I am just, I guess, I guess it will be one way to do, but I, I and I'm really curious. I, 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 it depends on what, what you are interested in. Uh, if you are interested in how the state and, why, and how, I don't know, the military were involved in the nuclear program in France and how the goal uh, thought about that. And it, was this linked to the colon colonies or not? Or It depends really on your research question. Uh, if you are, uh, if you are uh, interested in environmental impacts or uh, in the form of the states, because there are many in interesting uh, work about the link between energies and the form of the state. So basically, the, the, there is a, a good argument saying that many states in the 30s, 40s, 50s relied on coal, for instance. Uh, and a kind of social state emerged from, it's, it's not a deterministic argument, but because there were important trade unions, there were hundreds and thousands of uh, miners and uh, the railway workers which transport, and they had, they had the power to stop the flows, you know? And so there is an argument, which is really interesting, that the, the, they were in the UK, in France, in, in, in the US a, a little bit. Uh, quote, social state emerged linked to the coal extraction and the coal sector. And then it changed with oil, of course. And then it changed with nuclear. And then how? I don't know. You have to study how, how the state, the form of the state in France changed because of nuclear. It's really a huge question. You need to make a PhD about that. I don't know. I, I, I just guessing. Um, yeah, but I'm really curious about you, those yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, regarding the last um, thing you mentioned about understanding how the social structures and the power relations are reflected <coughs> in the biophysical structures, how do you think it would look like? Because, for example, I am thinking about violence. For example, violence like. Uh, regarding extractivism. Uh -huh. So I think that violence can already be measured in like quantity methods. So it's just like a qualitative thing, element. But then when I see biophysical, the biophysical like part is measured in, the, for example, the quantities of flows and stokes. So I don't, maybe I just have a really narrow perspective but I don't understand how can we combine like the two elements, like the quality element uh -huh. of saying, for example, violence is needed uh, for, for extractivism, for example, mm -hmm. for extracting minerals and everything. But how can we reflect that in mathematical models? No, you, 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 won't, you won't integrate in a mathematical model. But what, what you can do, for instance, let's take the, the yeah, environmental conflicts in Latin America. And what they, what they do 
it's like they have the global picture of Colombia, let's say, or uh, Ecuador or Brazil. Uh, they understand, uh, they, they see uh, all the big firms which are, which are uh, uh, evolving there, like the Valley or uh, any big multinational, but it can also be a smaller one, of course. And then what they do is that they, for instance, they will study one mine and all the conflicts are, and they will, for instance, uh, uh, um, <coughs> collect data about uh, all the extraction for, for this mine, all the value added uh, linked to this mine, and uh, social inequalities around uh, this mine. Uh, I mean, the impact on, uh, on women, on uh, black people, uh, indigenous people, and, uh, and that, that's, what, that's what they, they do. So they, they don't put these qualitative aspects into a mathematical model, just, just it's like, the social metabolism is like a background. They say, okay, like we have we collected all the data. We understood uh, uh, that it's going for exports or for the national. It, it can also be extracted for a national company or for a national pr production, but usually it's, it's for ex exports. And then, yeah, they, they interview people. They, they, they correlate that with, uh, it's always pretty much the same. The pollution are really correlated with uh, the, the social classes, which are the, the weakest in the power relation uh, in all of them. Uh, and they, they, they do that also in the US, for instance. Black people are uh, way more uh, affected by pollution uh, around uh, one uh, uh, extraction site or around uh, 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 well, around uh, uh, an industry or so. And so what I, what I, I want to highlight is uh, what I, 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 want, I, I wanted to, to, to say is only that maybe you can also think that we, you don't care about social metabolism if you want to, uh, to, to study one environmental conflict. And I, I, I will agree. I mean, you don't necessarily need it. But it's a good tool, I think, to, to go there and to have a, a, a solid background to, to go to, your, uh, to study and to interview people and populations. Uh, that's that's the, the and I and I think it's really interesting when they cross all those power relations and that that's really the sense of political ecology and that's that's really nice and they 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 will for instance uh, explain the history of uh, the one territory and all the people involved and uh, their religious uh, practices or they uh, I don't know it can be anything uh, the, and uh, how was the social metabolism of this territory before. And how it is today, but you can also say that you don't need it, and I'll be okay. <laughs> it's just a tool; it can be useful. It depends, but the qualitative and the quantitative are not are not going to uh, to one mathematical model. No, it's just a useful tool. Yeah, just a quick question. You made the statement that uh, if we maintain the fixed capital but growth, we would. Uh, surpass the 1.5 degrees target. Uh, I'm just curious, like, uh, like so, so one question, like what literature, like, uh, or do you, can I reference that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It was very shocking. Yeah, yeah. And second of all, uh, like extended on that, uh, huh. because here we've heard that in some seminars, we've heard that maybe technology can actually like help on this and we can like actually like use it to, so it is actually like if I remember correctly the first seminar where we like actually like introduced like a bit of the growth. Um, ah, okay. <laughs> if I remember correctly, maybe I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I am just interested in your opinion. About yeah. So uh, I will send you uh, my slides and references, uh, and if I you can send me an email uh, for uh, those literature. Uh, but it's, it's a really important fact uh, to have uh, in the political discussion uh, about the stocks. I mean, uh, what, what we do with that and uh, how, how is it possible to reduce them? And uh, there are many people uh, interested in, uh, in understanding what are the services that those stocks uh, uh, provide to the population and what are the needs, basic needs, we, which uh, uh, can be satisfied with the minimal amount of stock. Um, and uh, yeah, I will send you those, uh, those references. Now about technology, yeah, this is a classical, <laughs> well, the technological hope uh, that uh, yeah. there will be green hydrogen and green uh, blah, blah, blah. For instance, I have a good example here about the electric car. 
Okay, those infra infrastructure, we won't change them. It, it won't change anything if uh, all the trucks and all the cars uh, 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 are use uh, electricity instead of fossil fuel. You, you, you still will have to maintain them, repair them, and all that. So that's a solid argument to say that it's insufficient. But there are, there are many, many arguments. The main one actually is the, the political argument. It's, it's completely this idea that technology can help. Of, of course, it can help a little bit. There are, there are, there are uh, uh, people trying to quantify how, 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 uh, how it can help uh, to optimize all the flows and with uh, maybe a new technology. And some people say that we have maybe for 20% it will help. But you, the, the main aspect that I, I, I highlighted here is about the, the solid fundamental structure of the economy. If you don't s s transform the fundamental structure of the economy, there we, there won't, uh, you, you won't see any change, any, any. It's impossible. Because all those flows are social flows. And this idea that the technology can, can change the world does not care about uh, uh, social relations. That's it. They don't think those flows as, uh, as embedded in social relations. And this is the, the hegemonic paradigm in uh, the European Commission, in uh, OCDE, uh, uh, F, uh, IMF, uh, World Bank, anywhere. They don't care. They, they, they don't think, of course, because they don't have any interest to, to think about those power relations. And, and so they just think that, okay, uh, it's, uh, it's becoming a, an urgent uh, uh, issue and we need to do, do something, and they are lost. They, they only can provide a, a, a technological solution or market solution. But if you, I mean, the, 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 it's obvious that you need to change social relations. And what I mean is power relations to change anything about those flows. That's my argument. But I'm, I'm, I'm isolated uh, in the debate. Huh? <laughs> it's not the main. Uh, I'm Seward from Peru. Um, I wanted to ask you, since you mentioned uh, this thing about the electric cars, uh -huh. what do you, how do you perceive the, this uh, drive or this uh, resolution that uh, is um, uh, stated in the European Green Deal of uh, replacing fossil fuels with uh, green energy, main, mainly uh, mm -hmm. solar and wind, mm -hmm. uh, taking into account the yeah, yeah. Metabolism, but also yeah, yeah. the global ecology yeah, yeah. and the extractivist frontiers. And yeah. that, what would imply? I mean, what's your, what are your thoughts? Yeah, this is really interesting. There is a, uh, an emerging literature which is really, really great about the, the so called, let's say, uh, the, the, the new, uh, uh, the, the, I think they call that green extractivism. I mean, we, we, we will extract a lot of lithium of co or cobalt uh, for uh, uh, elec electric cars, for instance, but it will be still an extractivism in Latin America. It will still be an uh, 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 ecologically uh, an equal exchange. Uh, so it's with the fundamental structure will still remain the same, but Norway will be a little bit greener, uh, France and uh, Germany, okay? But the rest of the world will be, uh, will, will be still in a, a really damaged, uh, will live in a damaged uh, environment. Uh, I, I don't know if you heard about uh, cobalt mines in Congo or lithium in everywhere in uh, South Latin America. So it's not a solution, it's obvious. I mean, it's, it's, it's a headlong rush. They, they just keep and keep in the same, with the same structure, with the same, but they try to green it, to green. They, they hope to green all the world. But the, I mean, this is, uh, they only green fuels in Europe for some rich classes. And so it, 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 it won't change anything. Anything. And there is a, there are many debates about uh, recycling those batteries. Or uh, I mean, uh, I, I'm I'm only talking about the global economy. Uh, but uh, but it's really interesting because uh, um, uh, all th those materials uh, using lithium, uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, all those uh, um, metals, are also important for uh, renewable energy, uh, wind, uh, solar, and so forth. So again, this is a huge debate, and well, I, I, I guess I, I, we need a, a, also renewable energy. But uh, yeah, the, the, the degrowth 
and the post-growth uh, paradigm are, uh, they have strong argument. They basically say, no, we need to degrowth. That's, that's it. We need to, to go to, to change the paradigm, all the paradigm. It's not only like a, we'll have a, a, a huge solar farm and a huge... Uh, uh, and I, I can add to this argument that usually we only add Renew renewable energies to fossil fuel energy to uh, biomass energy and so forth. We we don't we don't uh, uh, there is no uh, substitution from one to another usually in the, the global in a global perspective. So uh, it, maybe it will be interesting uh, to develop those uh, renewable energy if we decrease a lot all other energy and then say okay we need a little bit of those metals and maybe we can do that. Uh, but the first aspect is to decrease by a tenfold factor, I don't know, I, I, I'm not, a, uh, I don't make any prediction here, but uh, that, that's the main, the, the most important thing. But I, 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 what they do now is they, they study this tension between all this green transition that uh, Europe is uh, promoting and other uh, 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 rich countries uh, in the world, and the fact that this green transition needs a lot of uh, lithium, cobalt, and other uh, 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 rare, rare metals, and uh, and so this is this is the the new extractive, the new frontier they call it, and it's and I think it's uh, yeah as I said it's like they it's it's still the same paradigm and they they develop only another frontier and another it's uh, another type of extractivism, um, but I I I, I yeah I doubt uh, it will change uh, anything to. With me yeah, yeah, you can you can find uh, lithium extractivism uh, or the, the new uh, uh, frontier. But yeah, okay, I can send you uh, an email after. Um, there's a question from a student who's joined us online on Zoom. Ah. Um, it's Nina. She's from the UK, and she's asking um, if in the current political climate you think there is any way of overcoming ecologically unequal exchange. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's uh, six in the afternoon. I'm tired. Um, well, th there are there are uh, uh, interesting propositions. I I am not normative, so I don't. I never say we need to do that and that and that. But I just I can ol only mention uh, the existing studies and propositions, and. Uh, there are, uh, yeah, well, first we, I mean, uh, it, it means relo relocate a lot of industries, a lot of uh, the agriculture to, to have a more local agriculture, to stop with free trade, to stop with the, the, uh, the world, uh, uh, um, uh, WTO. WTO, World Trade Organization. Uh, so it's, it's huge. <laughs> and you, I mean, because you, you can... Uh, the problem with, with those debates is you can you can uh, you can uh, really uh, uh, fall into a wishful uh, thinking. Uh, uh, you know, oh yeah, we we, we will close, uh, we will stop with free trade. Uh, okay, well, I, I can say that here, but it it doesn't make any sense. I mean, <laughs> I, I, because because it's all about power relations, and they are really strong economic interests, which don't want to to stop with free trade, but. Can we? Yeah, we can, of course. We, 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 we need a local agriculture, we need a, a, a local industry, smaller industries, and there there's, will still be, uh, there will al ex always exist trade, of course, trade will always exist. But we, 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 we have to stop with those asymmetries. And there is one pro uh, political proposition in France, um, which is a, 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 a solidary protectionism, let's say, so, protectionism solidaire. And the idea is that uh, 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 to develop protectionism in an ecological and, uh, uh, manner and, uh, with solid, with, uh, uh, and helping, uh, uh, let's say, uh, poor countries or the global source countries. Uh, because, of course, there is also the, an argument saying that if we stop with free trade, poor countries will, uh, 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 will uh, uh, be really affected and maybe a lot of poor populations. So it's not only about stopping uh, free trade and stopping imports, but we need also to think about all those populations and how we can at the same time uh, 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 end all those free trade agreements and help 
those countries with a, a more ecological development. But those are political propositions. I don't know, if, is it wishful thinking, is it not? Uh, but there is, I think that it's really important at least that uh, to have a, 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 a serious political debate about free trade. And today I think it, it's not, it's not in the debate anymore. Uh, all those Trump. Huh? Thanks to Trump. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, <laughs> not the, not an ecological protectionism, actually. <laughs> of course. In one of the discussions we had together, you mentioned the road, and here you also mentioned the road, one third of the gravel and, and sand. It's, it's a huge part. Yeah. But of course, the maintenance of the road is related to the fact that big trucks exact. are going to, from Spain to, to Denmark, exact. et cetera. And very likely there is maybe with railway, maybe with other types of agriculture. Yeah, yeah. The rule one third is it's already yeah. part of the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, we have to stop like sending uh, uh, I don't know uh, strawberries from uh, uh, Spain to uh, Germany and from Germany to Spain all the time. It's uh, it's obvious. I mean, we all agree with that. But it's it's at the core of the Euro European Union. It's a, it's the. Uh, the free market and the free uh, uh, free trade is uh, like the essence and the, the, the uh, of the uh, huh? core of capitalism. Yeah, but yeah, but in, in the con in the European Constitution, it's it's written. So th so this is a, a really important debate. I have no solution, but it's obvious that it's completely uh, 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 stupid <laughs> to 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 maintain those flows from. One, uh, we all know those examples that, uh, I, mean, I don't know, apples go from one country to another and then come back and it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's obvious, but it makes money. Any additional question? Thanks a lot. Merci.